<laughs> it's time for us to move to Collision as well, too, and to Wrestle Dream, which is coming up Saturday. Look, there's not much to be said about Collision because they have not added a whole lot. It's Andrade El Idolo against Juice Robinson right now, which, of course, plays into last week with with Jay White and uh, Andrade. And the only other match that's scheduled right now is Best Friends Against the Kingdom. So one would assume the Kingdom should get the victory there, considering they're in one of the main event storylines as we go into Wrestle Dream and go into next week with AEW. And as I mentioned, Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, same place they're going to be hosting Collision on Saturday. They'll be there on Sunday for the pay-per-view is Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. the main event of this show? Is it MJF and The Righteous because there may be something more uh, storyline-wise that comes out of it? What do you do in this case? Because to me, with it being a tribute to Inoki and with all a lot of the attention, even though I'm sure there are some mainstream fans that are not hardcore wrestling fans that are rolling their eyes at why everybody else is so excited about Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre, to me, that is the perfect way to end that show, at least on paper. I think that that will be the main event since the show was announced. It was the first match announced, and it is a match that as people have been looking forward to quite frankly, for years now. These two have faced off, competed against each other in the past, but that was uh, a different time. And Zack Sabre Jr. has, quite frankly, gotten himself to the point where he is one of, if not the best wrestlers in the world, right up alongside Brian Danielson. Or, Yeah. I always forget. I always screw it up. They did that to us. The, Brian, the whole Daniel Brian, Bryan thing, they yeah. did that to us. Brian Hated Danielson. Um yeah, and I think it, that is the best way to end this show when you look at the card. I don't think you put MJF and The Righteous as the main event, regardless of what storyline you have coming out of that. A lot of people were really down, I, I saw online, about The Righteous winning. And if you watch The Righteous win the uh, four-way tag match, whatever it was a couple weeks ago, I mean, they, they get over when they wrestle in front of yeah. the crowd. Uh, but it seems as if they're kind of a placeholder here for what I would think would be MJF winning and then eventually losing these belts to the kingdom. Uh, but, you know, I could be wrong. I, I would usually... I'm split on who I want to take in this match because, you know, Brian Danielson probably has a match coming up against Okada in January. I would be very surprised. He's certainly going to have a match coming up against someone if he chooses to go to the Tokyo Dome. But, man, like you mentioned, Zack Sabre Jr. has had a, a hell of a year. He has been hot. He got TMDK over. He's been He's been fantastic. And... I there's part of me that says and look and I think if it was left up to Brian Danielson he would say uh, Zack Sabre Jr. is going over but it's an interesting thing here because he is one of AEW's biggest stars and for as much as we love Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. is not a big AEW star and unlike a Osprey or unlike an Aussie Open who has already come over that doesn't seem to be in the tea leaves that he's going to be an AEW guy, quote unquote, anytime soon. So, what do you do in this situation? I, I think Zack Saber Jr. wins. The reason I think that is because he has a match also coming up with Will Osprey uh, a few weeks afterwards at Royal Quest Two, Three, I something like that. Three. Yeah. Uh, and he has been positioned as one of the strongest competitors in New Japan and really in Ring of Honor and AEW when he's competed there this year. So I think, I, I, you know, I think the <laughs> win helps him a lot more than it does Daniel Bryan. Bryan I, I agree Danielson, with you. Daniel Bryan Danielson. I agree with you 100%. And, I, I again, the only thing that would, would – lean me against that is because again brian danielson this is an aew show not a new japan show and brian danielson is there again is one of the biggest stars there hangman adam page and swerve yeah but you know also Good. anoki mike 
Yes, sir. Anoki was always known for putting over people, right? <laughs> so maybe this is the maybe this is Daniel yes. Bryan. Doing, <laughs> He had no. I couldn't even keep a straight face. Yeah, I was sorry. gonna say no. Noted, noted. Put her over is there. Hangman Adam Page. I have a feeling he is going to be putting over Swerve Strickland in his hometown of Seattle. That is for sure. I think Swerve has been hot. I'd like to see him get the victory here. I'd like to see Ricky Starks get the victory over Wheeler Yuta too. But when it comes to Page and Swerve right now. What do you do? To me, I, I think it's a no-brainer that, that Swerve gets the win, and I almost feel a little bit bad for the hangman here because he almost always has the crowd on his side. But I don't know, it, with, with Swerve around in his hometown, I wonder how that's going to be. I think Swerve, I'm hoping he gets a statement, a definitive win here over Hangman Page. I think it would do wonders for him. He's been on the verge multiple times he had a great performance against tanahashi i remember yeah. over the summer yes. right and that was like arguably one of tanahashi's worst days right like right off the airplane looked like he could barely get up I, I, that, that, that is man's actually life. yeah that's right because he slipped on the top rope yeah and swerve before then looked like a superstar he's put on God, I used to see him at MLW shows what, five, six years ago, something like that. And the amount of size he's put on and like quality mass, too, uh, is noticeable and makes him an even bigger star when you see him in person. So I am very high. Uh, I, I buy the stock that Swerve's selling. I'll tell you that much. You know, there's all this, and again, this is, and we won't talk about it, but there's all this hullabaloo about would you bring in Matt Riddle? You know, that's always the name at the top of the list, and people talking about Dolph Ziggler, other people, but it's like, you know, Andrade El Idolo. Yes, Roosh is having an issue, I would assume, right now with visas. I don't know what it is, but like Roosh, Buddy Matthews, Swerve Strickland, Ricky Starks, like... You need to worry about those guys before you bring anybody else in to muddy the waters because you have these horses that are already under contract with you, but you have them, you know, you haven't saddled them up yet. You haven't been able to really get a hold of them and broken them and figure out what you want to do with these guys yet. And I hope these guys continue to get the opportunity. And Paige and Swerve Strickland is just, to me, that's a great, that's something that is definitely only AEWs. They're the ones who put that out. They're the ones who have created created this feud and i have a feeling it won't be done yet so i hope swerve does get the victory here and i hope ricky starks gets the victory over wheeler yuda too I, I don't see any other reason for him not to get that victory considering he's coming off this stuff with brian danielson but kenny omega chris jericho kota obushi against the don Callis family Takeshita, sammy guevara and will osprey man i want to go heavy heels here but Man, I don't know. Don Callis family, hard to go against them here. At least, uh, at least for me, it's hard to go against them here. You've got to think there will be some sort of miscommunication on the part of Omega, Jericho, Abushi, Jericho, where even if it doesn't lead to them fighting necessarily in fighting, you know, it could lead to plenty of opportunities for the heels to take advantage and i think that the callous family winning you know really solidifies them as another top heel act and with like the bcc moving back seemingly to the face side i think that and, i mean what's happening with the bullet club gold here you know what i mean like yeah. you would think if it's mjf and we're trying to be led by somebody to believe that it's mjf or maybe adam cole attacking uh, Jay White, but that seemingly positions Bullet Club Gold kind of as baby faces too, which I wouldn't necessarily say is a bad thing because with how wacky and over the top they've been recently, I think they're going to have a hard time being really, you know, rallied against as as hardcore heels 
by this fan base. They're like the acclaimed. They I, they are so entertaining and so good in their roles. And let's be honest, Juice Robinson and Jay White are great, you know, compared to the Guns, who have a lot less experience, but they are just complete walking cartoon characters. You know, you do have the ability to kind of waver them back and forth, you know, to face heels like the House of Black or to face, you know, a team of baby faces as well, too. But I would love to see that exchange between the Bullet Club and the Don Callis family if they decide to go in that direction. I mean, that is there's a lot of good, there's a lot to like about that. MJF and the Righteous. Do you think it's a case where MJF, to me, again, the Righteous are in a funny spot here because if you're going to do anything with them, you still need to make them look strong, even if they're going to slip on a banana peel or somebody's going to interfere and give MJF the victory here. Does Roderick Strong show up and get involved? That's that's the obvious the thing, thing to I me, mean, right? Yeah. Like, and either cost he's got to cost Righteous the match to try to save the titles for his friend Adam, <laughs> or something along those lines. I would think, but yeah, Another I've got. I think MJF retains. I think that the team with him and Cole is too hot still. Even with Cole's injury to split up, there's so many great things you could do if Cole's around on television or able to do some backstage segments with him and MJF buddying up. I, I think that this is actually a perfect opportunity to extend their relationship a little bit longer. All right, FTR against Aussie Open. I'm taking FTR, even though it's another big loss for Aussie Open. What do you think? I agree. Chris Statlander, Julia Hart. Chris Statlander. What do you got? I agree. Christian Cage, Darby Allen, who you got? Christian retains. That's what I'm saying, too. We'll get into Eddie Kingston and Katsuyori Shibata when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi, filthy Tom Lawler here with you. We've wrapped up a Friday. It just flew by. Where did it go? Where did it go, Tom? Hopefully not into the ether. I'm hoping somebody press record on the machine unlike on monday when brian and i were doing our show but. yeah it's a this is all on producer Dave. wait he had a problem on your show as well too he forgot to record a whole segment with dom this week i swear to god about oh 30 minutes god. in 20 or 30 minutes in on monday he goes i never hit record and I'm like, is this that a dude bit is, what is cooked. going on here that man is absolutely cooked and you know who else could be cooked cooked? trip if he if he had any guts to get into the ring with you, and I'm not here to because I don't want a Timberland in, in, in my rear end, but Eddie Kingston, Katsuyori Shibata for only Eddie's ROH World and NJPW Strong Titles. You once held that title. Have you ever faced Eddie King? When, have you? When is the last time you faced Eddie Kingston, if ever? Is he am, scared of you? I am the first and longest reigning. New Japan Strong Openweight Champion of all time. Mm -hmm. I have faced Eddie Kingston twice. I am two and zero mm. against him. I would have gone face to face with him more times in the past. He called me out to do a jujitsu class with him, and I showed up, and he was nowhere to be seen. So I've got a bone to pick with this gentleman. But we'll see if he makes it past Katsuyori Shibata because the last time. There was an Anoki tribute show. Was Anoki Bombaye 2022, where the headlining match, the headlining fight was Katsuyori Shibata against me, Filthy Tom Lawler. And unfortunately, Katsuyori Shibata walked away the victor in exactly 12 minutes, 30 seconds. Each Nissan. He also had a handful of trunks. He did. He won't admit that. He I submitted. I'm calling it down Granny's memory lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. This yeah, is new stuff. This is more up to date. You know, I'm I see. Okay. This is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just. No, said. no, no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> the <laughs> New Testament. Everyone let her go. We lived on a farm 10 miles east of Baker. More yeah. recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say, this isn't new, no, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're just going to be not, quiet. And you, am I out of my you, mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm fining Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined $100. Oh. 
it was Martells and Hebes. Hebes? The first one is Martell. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes? The daughter Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what, what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> You thought I wasn't going to like this segment, <laughs> Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.